Well, hello there. This is Shane from Shane's Books and Review. I'm so happy that you made it by today. It's Friday, and today we're going to be talking about The Scar, which is a book wrote by Serge Diacinkno and Marina Diacinkno. And The Scar is best summed up as a book that I would most certainly say, read it. It's an interesting story. As I mentioned on Monday, it follows our main character of, I am the greatest, then he becomes the worst. I wasn't exactly sure how things were going to play out in this book. It's not that there was anything completely overly different, but the book is completely different from other things in the same genre, really. And I don't know if it has to do with the mindset of the authors or if it has to do with the area versus my area or whatever. It doesn't really matter. The point is, it is completely enjoyable in so many ways. There's these moving factions inside of it. Two main ones. One has to do with Lash, which is a fanatical type of a religious cult that wants to bring forth the end of the world, but they feel like they're going to be protected for whatever reason. But then there's the Wanderer, which the Wanderer is a very interesting portion of this book. It has to do with a character that it's thought that maybe he is the one holding back everything from happening, or maybe he's this magical, mystical thing that has absolutely nothing to do with humanity, but is kind of stuck where he's at. And he meets out vengeance upon those that really deserve it. And this is what happens to Eggert. Eggert is this very brash womanizer, and he is the person that we all have known at one point or another that has absolutely no issue doing anything that they put their mind to only halfway zero effort maximum output type of an individual and during the time period he lives in it just how it happens that sword play is the way to go and so he becomes almost the man's man of even the army but it is his womanizing that gets him in a lot of trouble there's this very beautiful woman that is a student from the university that comes in and she's got her fiance with her he pushes things just too far Instead of graciously accepting no, he knows the rules and regulations the same as everybody else, and he uses those to his maximum benefit in this area. He ends up fighting her fiance after a day or two of following them around from point to point and messing with them trying to figure out what actually happened within this library that had halfway burnt. There were some very particular texts that they were interested on on the Cult of Lash. He ends up calling out her fiance in a way that he just cannot abide and so he draws the line on the road and of course the challenge is accepted the poor student is no match for someone like that that would be so very well versatile and trained let alone one that excels so very far and so even Eggert, while he is fighting the student her fiance he questions himself a little bit because he knows that this isn't a challenge for him and he knows that he's really not in the right but he does it anyway now in the meantime there's been this old gray-haired guy that's been spotted a couple of times and whenever the fight ends with the student dead on the street and Egger now oh look I've, I've defeated him now I can go after this girl but is absolutely rejected because why would he think that was such a good idea in the first place you don't win affections by killing somebody else what's wrong with that long of it all is this the wonder sees it and he's like you are such a pathetic individual paraphrase by the way he didn't actually say it that way but whenever they run into each other in the bar it just so happens that Edward is really questioning what he did that he challenges Eggert to a duel and so he goes to fight this old gray-haired guy and he's like great here comes another fight that's going to be something that I shouldn't even have to mess with but they both have honor about themselves and agree to meet without seconds etc and do indeed and this is where Eggert really gets worked over <laughs> And he was actually quite glad that his friend that usually follows him around wasn't there to see it because it was such a devastating, soul-crushing loss. But he ends up getting a scar. There's one point where right before his sword is flicked away, his cheek is cut. That's when things started to change. And that was whenever I mentioned on Monday that I was getting ready to put the book away. It was right as that was leaning up to that scene where Eggert fought her fiancé because I just, I don't really care for peeing contest and that sort of thing. It's just not interesting to me. But I'm glad that I stuck it out. And that's really in the very, very front of the book because it's such a short portion of the story. The rest of the story has to do with somebody that gets transformed in such a big way. It's actually really amazing to see. It was the humbled individual that got to grow from a mistake and learn more about themselves and who they really were through the entire process that had me so interested in it by the end of the book. He goes from being a sword master to being someone that's studying magic. He goes from being that I am to a person that can't even 
use knives, or swords, or can't even stomach the idea of fighting, or anything that has to do with any kind of confrontation. And especially when he realizes that it is something that has to do with war and things from his previous life, he might be able to get away with doing things once or twice, but after that fact, eh, it causes him devastating emotional anguish to the point of locking up, much like a fainting goat, and not being able to do anything about it. He just has to watch as things happen around him because he's so uncomfortable and so much of a coward inside of himself. These are his own thoughts. I don't think that people that watch something happen is necessarily a coward. I do think that sometimes people need to speak up more. There are some people that are just wired where they will if they see a situation and some people that really want to avoid it. Now imagine that you were a, a will that always did and then all of a sudden when you try, it causes you excruciating diarrhea or just something like that, you know, just something strange. That would be a really big headspace change because you know who you are. You are the only thing that ever stays the same in your life and you might grow as an individual as you get older, that's fine. But imagine that you grow and as you get older and you grow and you've known who you are your entire life. And then all of a sudden one day, you're somebody completely different with the same memories, same thoughts, same desires, but now you just can't. Such an interesting thing for me to see. Now, the story is interesting in more, more things than just this, of course. We watch him groveling, just trying to find a place of safety because he knows that he's a deserter. He knows that he left the army. He knows that they're eventually going to find him. And this does play out a couple of times in the book, but also because of that scar that he has, there are particular people that will recognize that scar and know what it's from, and they'll want to have absolutely nothing to do with him. And so it becomes his journey's mission to not only find the person or thing that did this to him and get past it, but he doesn't realize how shallow that really is at first. And he ends up meeting the Dean of of the university and himself becoming a student which is something he would refer to as someone that was castrated before because for some reason he thought that all students were castrated yeah okay rumor mill right but he meets the dean and he's trying to kill himself but he can't he can't even do violence to himself now He's begging the Dean to throw him down a well so he'll die. And the Dean's like, nah, why don't you just come do some accounting type work for me? We'll see if we can teach you a little bit along the way. But this was actually the best thing that could have happened for him. The Dean took him in, took pity upon him, and there's a big connection between the Dean and him. It's already something that happened within the book. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but it's because of that connection that it's a phenomenal story also of forgiveness and acceptance. Not only acceptance of who he is to himself, but of others of himself and his new self. And of course there is triumphant type things that happen. It doesn't mean whenever I say that, that the story ends well. I'm not saying it does. I'm not saying it doesn't. It's something that you should find out for yourself because the book is really well done. And I know that I said this on Monday as well, but I really wish that there were more available text from these two that were in my own language because I've so completely enjoyed not only the scar but Vita Nostra. Both books were phenomenal. If you've never heard of these two before I highly encourage you checking out the books that they do have available on Audible. They were done by a person that really did justice to it. Not only that but the person that did the translations that was so well done. The rhythm, the cadence on page and also with the person that reads it did a wonderful wonderful job of it and the authors themselves the original material that this came from was so well wrote that I would be hard placed to find something else to put at the top of my list so far this year. Now, I also know that <clears throat> Rob Dirks <clears throat> should be having another story come out this year. I think it was this year. I'm not going to hold him to it because I also know how life goes. I really do like that guy's writings. If you guys and gals don't know by now. Whenever it comes to the seriousness of the material and the transformative nature of the material for the characters that are involved in it, it is phenomenally done. Also, I would like to thank one of you guys and gals, Matthew, for bringing this up to me and letting me know that there was indeed another one that was available because I hadn't, I hadn't looked and I, shame on me because I should have, <laughs> but I really appreciate you letting me know that there was one that was out there that I had not picked up yet. And here's our review. I also understand that I go through a lot of books in the year that we talk about, specifically 52, but maybe I actually read more than that. Hmm? <laughs> the mediocre I usually leave out. 
the good, the bad, I put in. If you guys and gals have checked out Vita, Nostro, or the Scar, I would love to know. Let me know down there in the comment box because these are really prolific writings and I would put them right on par with some of the classics that we've talked about because of how in-depth the characters are and how realistic they seem and can seem to be. Granted, I've had so much going on here lately. This is Sunday, April the 7th, and I am recording the Friday, this coming Friday's video today, which is kind of weird because because usually I'm three weeks out on my videos. Mm, it's just the way it works. That way I keep a buffer, typically, until it happens like this, and I'm so very busy that I can't keep up. It's a good problem. I am not complaining, not at all. Professionally speaking, my company's doing fairly well. My hobby thing is doing pretty good too, because this is a hobby, I love doing it. I love doing it for you guys and gals, and I always will welcome input from you. So if you have something that you would like to suggest that we do or don't do, or if there's a particular book that you think maybe we would enjoy reading, feel free to let me know about it. We will check them out. And also, speaking of which, if you happen to want to help out with some of the cost around here, I think I need a new staple remover. I've never had one of those, and I really think it would help increase my workflow. Maybe not so much, but if you did want to lend a hand, I'm going to splash it up here and here. And if you do decide to help out, awesome, thank you, I very much appreciate it. But you don't have to. Just watching the videos is more than enough, really. And it helps the channel out in such a big way. So thank you. But if you do happen to go to Patreon, make sure that you come back to YouTube when you get done. So today's book was The Scar Wrote by Sergey. Oh, I'm so horrible with names. And Marina, I highly enjoyed it. I hope you do too when you get around to reading it. Hope you have a great weekend. This is Shane with Shane's Books and Review, and I will see you on Monday.